What's going on YouTube? Username Kite562 here, and I decided to do a reshoot of my review of Bram Stoker's Dracula the way that I usually do, since I really didn't like the sound of the audio quality in the first take, but I'm going to leave the first take up. But if you want to hear my thoughts on this review, definitely check out this video, but I'm going to wear my mistakes on my sleeve because, again, we're all human. And anyway, on with the review, re-review, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, this version of Dracula is from Penguin Classics. It has this nice black bookmark strap built into it. Here's the front cover with the black flowers and the gray background. Here's the spine, Bram Stoker's Dracula, if my camera can pick it up. And I still stick by the score that I said in the first review of this. But you're going to have to sit back and relax if you're new to this video and listen to what I have to say. Now, my first favorite quote from this book is from Abraham Van Helsing. And that's, knowledge is stronger than memory, and we should not trust the weaker. And that's on page 130 of this book. Now, the story of Dracula is told from letters to different people, sent and unsent letters, telegrams, and it's a wide variety of characters. Like, from off the top of my head, we have Mina Murray, who then is named Mina Harker, Count Dracula, Quincy Morris, and Abraham Van Helsing, Arthur Holmwood, H-O-L-M Wood. So, I just thought this was a really wonderful and solid experience as a whole, and just, it really sent shivers down my spine, and it actually made sense, and the way that it was written, it really reminded me of a collection of Resident Evil journal entries. Mainly, one that comes to mind is from the Resident Evil remake, and that's the detailing of Lisa Trevor's mutation into a monster. It's just, it's so eerie. If you haven't played that game, there's an HD remaster of it. But I have to say, it was a really wonderful experience. Even though the story has a long list of characters, I find Mina Harker, Mina Murray, quite a clever character. And I have to say in one scene, I don't remember the page number or chapter, but it's when she and Lucy are in a hotel room together and she, Mina hides the room key in her nightgown's sleeve so Lucy doesn't end up wandering off to the patio area or the front terrace just sleepwalking around after hearing that mysterious flapping outside of her window in the middle of the night. And I have to say, for a book published in 1897, or written in 1897, it's still a really wonderful experience. And I have to say, another moment that really drew me in as a reader is the moment with John Seward and Renfield at the asylum really stood out to me, especially when Renfield set up his window with a bunch of feathers and blood on, like, the outside of it. And it was just a really solid experience. Like, he told Dr. Seward, Renfield did, when he's in this hypnotized, crazed state still, saying things like, the blood is life, the blood is life. And then lying to Dr. Seward about eating bugs, spiders, flies, and then most notably birds. And it, all these little moments really made the hair stand up at the back of my neck. And this novel was just absolutely wonderful. I have to say, I really enjoyed how all the characters had their own experiences. Like I stated earlier within this video, how Lucy Westernra... Like, she's dealing with the mysterious flapping noises and then a whole bunch of other things just really blew my mind. I have to say another scene was when Arthur tried to give Lucy a blood transfusion after Lucy's been feeling weak and rather not quite herself after that whole bat 
mentioning, and it just, the tension in the book was just absolutely velvety, if that makes any sense, and absolutely wonderful, like it wasn't hard to follow along once you understood the flow of the story and how everything was written, it was just a really solid and enjoyable experience as a whole. But I have to say, when Arthur Holmwood had to help Jonathan Van Helsing give Lucy a blood transfusion, I mean, that's his beloved, that's his future wife. It was just a really powerful scene to me. But I have to say, the moment when Lucy is fully turned really scared me because she almost mauls her husband's neck when she was trying to be all sweet and stuff and trying to get a kiss and a hug from... Arthur within this scene and if and it was from chapter 12 after her mother died Arthur escaped the fake from getting his throat literally mauled from his now dead wife Lucy which is now she is part of the undead Nosferatu if you want to be specific anyway within chapter 14 the chemistry between Jonathan Harker and Dr. Van Helsing really it was really solidified and strong, along with the twist about Lucy Westerner's death, which, spoiler alert, she got turned into a vampire. And I have to say, when Arthur and Van Helsing went to the Westerner crypt or tomb, and she was like peering through the forest, just lurking around like a ghost, just, you could really feel the coldness of that scene of them struggling to open the lock to the tomb. Just, again, a lot of pieces in this wonderful book really sent shivers down my spine. <laughs> and this is my first time reading it too, and it's absolutely great. But on and on, pages 225 and 226 were really wonderful, were a really wonderful experience to me. From chapter 16, the way the scene was described really had me at the edge of my seat as I read. And then, for point number 9, Dr. Seward's discovery of Renfield in his room when he had his, when he has his back broken, is just really solidified. But it turns out, with Dr. Van Helsing's thorough observing of Renfield, it turns out on pages 293 and 295 really sent more chills down my spine. However, it turns out Renfield only suffered a depressed, fractured skull extending right up to his motor area. And that's page 294, a quote from Dr. Van Helsing. And I have to say... My next favorite quote from this book is from Mina Harker, and it's on chapter 26, page 383. My latest and truest thought will always for him, or always be for him. Mina Harker, Dracula. And I have to say, for my final thoughts, even though it took me years, like a decade even, maybe a little over a decade, to read this book, it was still a gripping and solid story to me. So, at the end of the day, I give Bram Stoker's Dracula, right here, a 10 out of 10. And I would recommend. Leave a like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more content from this channel. This is Kite562, signing out. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day, everybody. Later.